Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Andy in Singapore. For today's video, we are going to do a review of the new Seiko Presage Classic Series. And this is the SARJ007. It is a JDM model. Pretty sure there's an international version as well. This is a really new model launched earlier in this year and obviously the main draw of this watch is the open heart feature here which allows you to see the balance wheel of the movement. So this movement is also a new movement. This is the 6R5J movement, obviously part of the 6R series, but the 5J has this 24 hour indicator at the six o'clock area. It is not a second time zone. It is not a GMT watch. It merely shows you the time in the 24 hour format. So if it's 10 o'clock in the morning, it will be 10 o'clock here. If it's 10 o'clock at night, it's going to show uh, time at the 22 hour mark here. So from the movement itself, you will see that this is uh, slightly at a higher tier when it comes to Seiko Presage. So typically the more entry level Seiko Presage models, they have the 4R movement. By virtue of having the 6R movement here, as well as thigh shield coating uh, on the watch and bracelet, this is priced in the mid-tier when it comes to Seiko's watches. This watch here has a street price of around $1,280. I know this is slightly on the higher side of things, but do bear in mind that this watch comes with plenty of features such as the 6R movement, the coated case and bracelet, as well as sapphire crystal here. So I think uh, this is partly justifiable. So this watch was loaned in from our boutique. Let me take some time to thank my good friend Eric for so kindly and generously loaning me all these watches for my video reviews. And now with the lens zoom in very slightly, let me run you through the key specs of the watch. The Seiko Presage Classic model here has a case size of just over 40 mm. I'm not too sure if this is a recycled case. Slightly on the bigger side of things for this type of design, this type of look, but we are going to look at how it wears later on in the reshot. We have the overall thickness of around 13 millimeters. That's measuring from the base of the display back to the top of the dome sapphire crystal. Just look at how the crystal here gives off the distortion. Okay, so over here you can see that the hands, the markers, they look like they're bent. I'm very confident that this is caused by the dome crystal, right? So there's no uh, funny tricks going on at the dial itself. It is not a convex dial, okay? This is mainly due to the dome crystal. The strap changing fans will be very happy to know that this is a 20mm luck width. You can definitely switch things up a little bit with a nice leather strap. I think it will look good with any dark colored strap, all right? So this is going to be very classy, very dressy looking if you get the right leather strap going on with this watch. L to L distance here is kept to a very decent size at 45.8 mm. I'm pretty sure this is going to make the watch wearable. It's not going to have a crazy luck overhang. So here's a look at the 6R 5J movement. I'm going to show you how it works. So as I turn the crown here, for every hour that the big hour hand moves, the hand at the subtile also moves one notch. All right, so as mentioned earlier, this is merely the 24 hour format of the time, all right? It is not a second time zone or a GMT complication. Now in terms of the overall build quality and case design, again, I'm not very sure if this is a recycled case uh, from the other 40, 40.8mm 40 uh, Presage watches. Alright, but the good thing over here is it's got dial shield coating which gives you uh, a certain degree of uh, scratch resistance. I think the dial shield coating is also applied to the bracelet as well. Alright, so hence this watch is priced slightly higher than the more basic entry level Presage models. So typically those watches will not have uh, sapphire crystal and no dye shield coating. Okay, but I got to admit, I'm not a big fan of the bracelet. I think it's got too much flex, too much give here. All right, the protective film is still on. 
this is a loan set so again i'm not going to remove all these things all right there is also a lack of tapering okay so there is a bit of taper here from the luck itself until the third link and from there it looks like there's no tapering at all not a very good look to it doesn't look very refined i'm not a big fan of this butterfly style clasp here no half links no micro adjust and uh, again for this price point i think seiko could have done more all right i mean of course you've got sapphire crystal and daishu coating on the case but uh, i think you expect a better bracelet so in terms of movement this one is from the 6r series in terms of accuracy it is not the best let's look at the decoration of the movement there is almost none and we do have a gold rotor with some stripes going on with the Seiko logo so perhaps again more effort should be put into decorating the movement after all this is a display bag now moving on as I talk about the dial design and the overall color combination so I dare say this is the most popular color universally known as the white dial version and all that but this is really a sort of a silverish looking dial you can see under this light condition that there is a bit of sun ray going on and there is also texturing on the dial so it doesn't show up you have to look very closely and this watch is also not marketed as a special dial i don't know hem leaf design uh, cocktail time glacier dial snowflake dial you know all the single presage models in the past the great legendary models they have nicknames for their dials and all that and those are marketed as such special looking dial but this one is not and it does have some sort of texturing going on i do like the recess at the sub dial here it's a very nice look to it and overall we've got really nicely applied markers and all that so I do see the attention to detail and I would definitely rate this on a higher tier when compared to the $500 to $600 category of Presage watches. Zooming out for a stage reshot of Seiko Presage, you can see this watch remains very wearable despite the larger case size. At 40.2 millimeters, this actually feels and it looks much smaller than on paper, all right? So typically 40, and above it's going to look slightly oversized for my wrist but this is not the case for the Seiko Presage here and I think this is largely due to the fact that the overall case design is sort of a pastel shape the overall thickness refers to the highest point of the dome crystal so overall the watch remains very curvy and looks rounded and it doesn't look overly big this is a really good weight as well coming in at around 135 grams that's with the bracelet fully unsized so i would say this is a really good daily beater all right very good legibility as well and for today's size comparison we are going to compare the seiko presage with my own washi dial aq4020 so both watches they look very similar at first glance in terms of size and at first glance they really look like they're the same case size but if you look closer you'll notice that the seiko here is much larger and it is also thicker than my AQ4020. So all in all, a really nice new addition to the Seiko Presage collection, the Seiko Presage Classic SARJ007. So this could be a watch to look out for if you're a fan of open heart um, movement, op open heart dial design. But for me, uh, this is not my thing, all right? I think I wouldn't want to look at the uh, balance wheel of my watch. There's no reason for me to want to look at it all right I, I i would know that the watch is working if the second hand is ticking away so if this is your thing this is your look by all means have a look at it uh, in terms of pricing watch is also uh, not the most affordable all right so i get it you're getting things like dia shield and sapphire crystal and all that but i do feel that this watch is slightly on the pricier side of things so there you have it that was my full review of the seiko presage sarj007 very new model 
launched earlier this year uh, but sadly the open heart design is not really my cup of tea so if you like this one by all means check it out all right so this is andy in singapore i'll see you next week for more watch review videos together with george and pixie we're gonna say goodbye for now bye bye